All right, we are live. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Kyle Henderson. We got the whole crew together. We got Andrew Bone. We got Tony Sukas. We got Tyler Waldrop. How's everybody doing? You guys, uh, I mean, we got the BamaInsider.com first annual draft. You guys, uh, how you guys doing, Bone? You uh, you doing good, man? It's good to see you. Oh yeah, I'm doing good. Still, uh, still, still at the lake. Uh, <laughs> you know, we uh, we ran from Birmingham. We we got came up to the lake. Um, God, it's been about ten days now, and uh, probably gonna stay up here for another ten days. <laughs> so, uh, so it's been enjoyable. Now we got we got Bone on. We're, we're usually have him talking recruiting, but tonight we're we're doing the first ever BamaInsider.com draft. So how it's going to work, we've already ordered the draft. Tony, what's the draft order? Give him a quick rundown real quick. Yeah, so it's a four-team snake with uh, Tyler Waldrop making the first pick, myself making the second pick, Kyle Henderson making the third pick, and then Andrew Bone making the fourth pick. But since it's a snake draft, Andrew Bone will also make the fifth pick and so on. You know, then Kyle, then me, then Tyler, and then Tyler twice. All right. Now let me let me show you. Hopefully, I can. This comes up for everybody. Can everybody see this um, nice little graphic that I made right here? So this is the actual BamInsider.com draft. So we're going to draft a quarterback, a running back, a wide receiver, flex position. That can be a. Um, how you guys seen the flex position? You guys seen it kind of like as a I was wide receiver, wide receiver, tight end, or running back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Um, mm. you're going to pick, a the best available offensive lineman. Now a player obviously can only be drafted once, um, defensive lineman, linebacker, defensive back, and then an assistant coach. So, um, that's how the draft is going to work. Be sure in, you know, sound off in the comment box. I, you know, we, we appreciate, you know, um, we appreciate the feedback in the, in the comment box. And we, at the end, I, you know, I'd be curious to see who you guys feel, which team is the best team overall who's who drafted the best so be sure and uh sign off in the comment box and and i have to say that that super chats will be read live online so there you go um so i guess uh here we go um tyler you're uh on the clock you're you're the lead off man do we do we have any sort of like timing or is it just like was like a minute i mean it should be fairly you quick take right? a minute to make this pick <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a 10-person draft. <laughs> All right, Tyler. Tyler, you're up, man. You're okay. Up. I've got I've got my pick. It, it was a pr- relatively easy uh, pick for me to make. I got to go with Najee Harris. I've written a lot about him over the last several days. I've talked a lot about him over the last several days. I'm gonna stick. W- I'm gonna support all my predictions for next season and everything that I think about Najee Harris. I think he's one of the best players on the team. I'm gonna take him first overall. All right. Najee Harris off the board. A bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> now, Tyler, is it true that you dislike Trey Sanders? It, it is not true. <laughs> I don't dislike Trey Sanders. When, when Najee's gone, <laughs> I'm sure I'll be all aboard Team Trey Sanders. But <laughs> I got I to gotta roll with Najee while he's still here. All right. Um, okay. So, um, Tony, who's, who's up next, man? Yes. Uh, with the second pick. In the COVID-19 Bama Insider Draft, Team Tony selects Michael McCorkle-Jones, better known as Mac, quarterback, Jacksonville, Florida. (laughs) All right, Mac Jones flying off the board. Okay, I expected that. Mac Jones is Tony's pick. Tony, how how many yards realistically does Mac Jones throw for? A lot. Um, I I could see him throwing in the the 3,800 range. Um, I think he's going to have a, a, a really good control of this offense. I mean, we've seen him in the four games. Uh, Mac Jones was actually second on my board, but Kyle doesn't allow punters, so I couldn't pick. <laughs> uh, but, no, Mac's a, Mac's a kid that, you know, I, I've followed for a while now, and I've, I've seen him. He's really good offense. Um, in the event that we don't have football next season, he's a 4.0 student, fluent in Mandarin Chinese, <laughs> has poised for success off the field as well. <laughs> but no, I really am confident in Mac Jones being the leader of my team. All right. Okay. Um, well done, Tony. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, I got the third pick, right? Is it me? That is you. All yeah. right. Mm-hmm. I, um, I mean, come on. How can how could you not pick Jalen Waddle? All right. <laughs> um, Jalen Waddle all the way. I think that was Bone's pick. He uh, was, was that your pick, Bone? <laughs> I mean, I had it, it, would have, it would have been in the top two, no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But, I, I, but think, I think I'm okay. 
I think, you know, a player like Jalen Waddell, and I guess you guys are probably tired of me saying it, but, um, and we'll talk about this again on our uh, video coming up here on BamInsider.com. If you've been following our 20 for 20 series, I talk about Jalen Waddell and just the fact that if used correctly, I really feel that this guy could really make a strong run for even the Heisman Trophy. Now, a wide receiver hasn't won the award since 1991, and he'd have to put up some ridiculous numbers to do that. I think Desmond Howard scored 20 touchdowns that year. But Jalen Waddle's a man on fire. So um, came in as a five-star, and uh, certainly, you know, there's no hype to really live up to because he was so good. But I think this year, him and, um, you know, Tony's first pick could do something special. So uh, Jalen Waddle is my number one pick. Bone, you are on the clock. Yeah, just go ahead and give me Smitty. All right. <laughs> Devontae Smith. Um, obviously love him. Um, you know, had an unbelievable, uh, you know, season last year. Um, you know, obviously everyone wants to, uh, you know, I'll always remember him for his, uh, you know, his touchdown catch against Georgia in the national championship a few years ago. Uh, but, you know, you know his, uh, his big performance over 200 yards, uh, whatever game that was, I can't even remember who it was against uh, off the top of my head. But uh, you know, he had an unbelievable junior season. Um, you know, he's going to have an opportunity. Um, you know, just like uh, you know Jerry Judy, I believe, to uh, you know to potentially uh, win the Blitnikoff Award because everybody knows about him. I mean, he he started, he and he continues to put up big numbers. You know, no matter um, you know who's out there guarding him. But it's going to be interesting. It's certainly going to be an interesting year for him with. Um, you know, without without having rugs, without having uh, Jerry Judy out there, um, but he's going to be able to have. You know, there's some other guys that are going to have some opportunities, like Jalen Waddle. But uh, but I certainly think that uh, Smitty's going to have a monster year, and you know, a guy that I feel like will potentially be throwing the ball to him is Bryce Young. That will be my number one pick in the second yeah. round. Okay, Bryce Young. His bones pick and the big pick. I mean, he's got Bryce Young and, and Smitty already. I, I mean, that that's a tough. Uh, <laughs> I told you, a, fourth is great. Yeah, that, yeah, good that, stack. that is very, <laughs> very nice. Nice. Uh, well, you know, we'll see if uh, <laughs> Bryce is able to uh, to win that starting position. But um, but I mean, Bryce is a uh, you know tremendous high school talent. Um, you know, I always say the toughest position to uh, to to evaluate coming out of high school is quarterback because you know it's all about you know what you have between the ears and um, you know can, how quickly can you can you learn the system? Can you adapt? Can you uh, gel with your your uh, your offensive line, your wide receivers, your running backs? You have to gel with everybody, uh, you know, along with your offensive coordinator. So. So, um, so I certainly think that Bryce has a extremely strong connection with uh, with Steve Sarkeesian, who um, you know was a big part in his recruitment. And I think uh, with him coming in early, obviously, uh, you know, not going to be able to uh, you know to go through spring practice or uh, or a spring game, but uh, but hopefully uh, he'll be able to uh, you know throw with these receivers during the uh, during the spring and I certainly or excuse me during the summer. But um, I think he's going to have an unbelievable career at Alabama. All right. Yeah, there's a Bones Bones team, man. Bone mm-hmm. Chugs in, in quarantine. He's got the best, so far the best team, in my opinion, and the best name. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, so uh, I'm up next. Um, I, I think I'm switching. I'm going to have the first uh, defensive pick in the draft, and I am going with Dylan Moses. Dylan Moses, uh, come on down. Oh, come on, Kyle. You're killing me, man. I've been planning on that all day. Right. I, got, I got Dylan I Moses. I going to get Moses next. It's, it's not. Uh, I, I okay, think, well. I, I mean, I, I think with Dylan Moses coming back, that certainly is a big sigh of relief for Pete Golding, considering just, you know, he's that um, – defensive team leader that Alabama missed last season. Alabama obviously had to start two freshmen at the inside linebacker position with Dylan Moses coming back. I think it brings, um, you know, the, the, not only the team leader, but the team alpha male back on the defensive side of the ball. So I think uh, Dylan Moses plays an instrumental role this season in improving Pete Golding's defense and um, Pete Golding's probably sleeping a little easier at night knowing that Dylan Moses is coming back. So um, good pick in, 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 um, you know, for the, the first defensive pick, I'm not surprised. Dylan Moses and uh, Jalen Waddle. I'm feeling good so far. You can't say good pick to your own pick. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, what pick are we on, actually? Five, six, seven. This is eight. your second pick? Yeah. With the second pick, with our second pick of the COVID-19 Batman Insider to draft, <laughs> Team Tony selects Trey Sanders running back, point six. Point, Port St. Joe, Florida. 
Sanders, running back. Ah, okay. All right. Ah, Trey Sanders. Okay. Much to the chagrin of uh, known hater Tyler Waldrop. <laughs> I think Trey Sanders is poised for a great season this year. I think uh, you could see him maybe getting up there like 800 yards, uh, depending on how they split carries with Najee Harris. I mean, you look at the way that Alabama is, has split its backs when it's had two elite backs before. Most of them kind of both hover around that 1,000-yard range. That's why I think um, Najee Harris, I think, had his kind of uh, his, his perfect storm season last year. So I think they're going to split up the carries a little bit more. And I really think Trey Sanders is not only a guy that can help you on the ground, but really help you through the air. He's kind of an all-around back, kind of can be that change of pace guy. And like we said before, I think you could actually use a two-back system with him and Najee. So a lot of things you can do with Trey Sanders. Really happy to get Mac and Trey. did not think I was going to be able to get that. So um, two great kids from the state of Florida. Tyler, you're up. Let's, let's do it. Yeah, I'm be honest. I'm reeling a little bit because I really did plan on uh, just getting Moses here. Uh, okay, so with Moses gone, I'm going to move on to the next guy I was looking at. I'm going to take uh, Patrick Sertan, the, the best defensive back on the team by far. So I'll have an upgrade over everybody. Uh, sure. All right. He's planning on going back to back and having the best defense, but I'm going to have to pivot a little bit. Um, off the top of my head, I may regret this, but I'll go ahead and take my flex. I'll take uh, Brian Robinson. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> whoa, man. So, uh, man. Good luck with uh, the two of y'all that still need running backs. Are you I feel for you. For something? Because, uh, wow. Brian We're, Robinson, the ninth pick overall in the draft? My team's running the ball. We're, <laughs> we're committing. You're going to need to because you don't have a <laughs> receiver as a quarterback. I think I'm going to have a 7 on 17. <laughs> Um, all right, Tony. All right, with our third round selection in the COVID 19 BEM Insider draft, uh, team Tony selects John Mechie, the third wide receiver, Brampton, Canada. Mechie, uh, yeah, okay. The Mechie, nice pick. You've got that under bone. Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, he's also my receiver as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank well, you. That's fine. Um, yeah, Mechie, um, I think, will be the third receiver for Alabama. Also gives Mac Jones somebody to throw to. Um, I believe he was born in Taiwan. Uh, that's just interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's going to be uh, one of the breakout players. He's somebody that uh, Tyler today on our 20 for 20 series uh, mentioned as a potential breakout player on offense, and I agree with Tyler on that. Uh, so, for my third round pick, I picked John Mechie the third. You don't need a wide receiver if you don't have a quarterback. So just putting that out there. <laughs> All right. Um, okay, I'm up. Sticking on the uh, defensive side of the ball, we'll go ahead and uh, scoop up uh, big bad Christian Barmore. Whoa, whoa. Oh, for the f first defensive lineman, you're going Barmore? Okay. Yeah, you know, I'm going Barmore. Play like a man on fire. Changing right now. Um, I mean, I know a lot of people are excited about uh, Le Le LeBron Ray coming back, um, but I, I just think, and I, I think LeBron Ray is obviously going to have a big year for Alabama. I think with him and Dylan Moser's returning, that certainly adds um, some veteran experience on the defensive side of the ball. Just because you know those guys are certainly each very talented. Um, but Christian Barmore, I think, and we talked about this today on our um, defensive video for breakout players is I, I think he's just the, the guy who plays angry on the defensive line. And I'm curious to see, um, you know, how he transforms as a player coming into this next season. And I think, um, you know, the way he played at the end of the season was just a small taste, but he's uh, in my opinion, he's Alabama's next big, bad lineman, defensive lineman. So, um, you know, my, my, my team so far built to uh, go against uh, Tyler's Titans. Right? Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Bone you up, man. Hmm. Who should I grab here? This is where we go into the. <laughs> All right. In my uh, in my flex. Uh, oh. No, 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 no. Hold on. Excuse me. Oh, that would be bold. Uh, yeah. In my this is my running back. I am going to take Keelan Robinson. 
Okay. Wow. The juice. Yeah. Uh, you know, we're going to go a little bit of speed guy right here. Um, potentially have a, uh, you know, an impact season kind of like uh, Josh Jacobs a few years ago. Uh, you know, he's a guy that, you know, during his junior year in high school, rushed for over 2,000 yards, and then he was injured throughout his uh, entire uh, senior season. So missed his entire senior season in high school. Got on the field a little bit as a true freshman. I think he's going to explode this year. Uh, get some carries, um, you know, in, not only in, as a running back, but also, um, you know, make some moves as a, uh, as a wide receiver. I think he can, you know, we, we really saw him, you know, when he was in the open space, nobody could, could, uh, could track him down this past season. I think he's got a chance to, uh, to have an impact season this, uh, this upcoming year. And uh, I guess I need to pick another player. Um, <laughs> let's see who's available still. <laughs> Anybody good left? No. Uh, <laughs> you know, I want some production on on the defensive side of the ball, so uh, I'm gonna go with a true freshman at linebacker William Anderson. Wow. Okay. Yep. Guy who's had forty. What was it? Forty sacks during his last two seasons of high school, and uh, obviously, you know big deal coming into uh you know coming into alabama needing to get some production there uh L alabama losing its two main sack sack artists in uh, in terrell lewis and uh and anthony jennings they're gonna need some production there william anderson probably the you know and i've been saying this for a while he's the guy the main guy in this recruiting class that's coming in this 2020 recruiting class that I feel like will make the biggest impact on the field. I mean, he can get to the backfield just so quick. I mean, he, he's got just unbelievable moves. And, you know, if you're looking for a guy that's going to make an impact as a true freshman, um, I'd look for William Anderson. Wow. Nice. Uh, nice pick. I was, uh, I was certainly thinking about Anderson. Um, I figured he'd be one of the next guys to go off the board. Um, all right. So uh, let's see, I got the flex position coming in. Um, I am going to go with, let's see. All right. I'm going to go with, uh, big bad. Uh, I got, I got, I got my speed guy, right. Jalen Waddle, uh, um, but I'm going for another speed guy that could also be dangerous inside the red zone. Tyler already knows who it is. Tyrell Shavers. Oh gosh. I'm not going to have anyone. <laughs> I think that, you know, when we talk about uh, wide receivers, um, you know, certainly Devontae Smith, Jalen Waddle, John Mechie, those guys are the guys. But Tyrell Shavers is a guy who I feel could be a guy, right? Six foot six, um, has everything that you would really want in a, in a wide receiver that could be, you know, stretch the field, be difficult to stop inside the red zone. So um, depending on what situations happen this year, I think he gets on the field finally this year and does what we all expect him to do. So, um, yeah, Shavers is uh, is my flex pick. I I, um, I I had to go with him. Oh, Kyle, you're killing me. <laughs> pick another running back at wide receiver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to at some point. <laughs> oh my gosh! I guess it's it's uh, it's me. All right, with, okay, you're with my fourth pick. I'm going to dip into the state of Alabama with a forgotten leader on the defensive line, uh, LeBron Ray. Okay. I think, I think that's a kind of a surprise that uh, he slipped to me at this point. I think he's, you know, the most established def returning defensive lineman uh, will be really be a leader there. He's a guy I think would have made a big difference last season had he not gotten hurt. Um, I really expect him to have a kind of a low key breakout season. I think everyone kind of knows who he is. They just kind of forget about him because of the, because of the injury. So I expect him to have a great year and, and really kind of lead that defensive line, which will still be pretty young. Tyler, you're up. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I like the LeBron Ray pick. I was actually looking at LeBron Ray. So of course, Tony picked him first. Um, so since uh, my team is clearly committed to running the ball and just running the ball, I'm going to go ahead and grab uh, Alex Leatherwood. <laughs> so we have somebody to block. <laughs> totally just don't use any receiving. We're, we're setting offense back a couple <laughs> decades with my team. <laughs> and uh, gosh, okay. I didn't expect to get to this point. I'm going to go ahead and take uh, – I'm going to go ahead and take 
DJ Dale for defensive line. Just okay. you got to play the trenches to win. So, uh, you know, I, I think DJ Dale, somebody I would, I would have considered uh, maybe not ahead of LeBron Ray and, and, and Barmore, but, but right there, I think he kind of gets lost just because of the position he plays and he kind of opens things up for those guys to have success. So. <sighs> All right, um, Tony. Tony's up, right? Right. Um, gonna dip back into the state of Florida again and take uh, Jordan Battle as my safety. Okay. Uh, I think he's probably the second best returning defensive back in my book um, behind Sertan. I think he's really gonna step into that mm. safety role, really command that the, the safety position. He's a guy that, you know, kind of, worked his way into some formations uh, last year, and now he's going to step into a starting role. I think he's going to be the next kind of big thing in the, in the Alabama secondary. All right, here we go. Um, I'm going to take um, – I'm going to take Evan Neal. I mean, I'm trying to load up on five stars here. So um, I like Evan Neal, probably moving to that tackle position. Um, <laughs> what's not to like about him, right? Six, seven, 360 pounds played every single game last year as a true freshman at the guard position. So he's out of position, um, had an outstanding season, played the second most snaps, uh, by a freshman next to Shane Lee. Um, who I'm surprised no one's taken. He's still on the board, Tony, um, Evan Neal, uh, <laughs> Evan Neal, uh, moving to tackle, certainly going to do his thing. So um, Evan Neal is my offensive line pick. Bone, you are on the clock. Yeah, give me uh, – as a defensive back, I think I'm going to take Ronald Williams. Wow. Ooh. Junior college All-American. Um, you know, Nick Saban basically told him, he said, hey, you know, we don't recruit junior college players unless, uh, you know, we need them to come in and play right away and not just play but start right away. And, you know, Ronald Williams, first team, junior college All-American, um, you know, he's got great size. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's six foot two, uh, about 190 pounds. You know, I certainly think he can come in and potentially, uh, you know, start on the opposite side of uh, Patrick Sertan Jr. Um, or the second, you know, I, I certainly think he's uh, – or the, I think he's the third, actually. Um, um, but, uh, but yeah, I love Ronald Williams. I, I think he's got a, he's got a chance to really come in and make a, uh, a big impact. So clearly I'm sticking with this, uh, you know, tw I've got three guys in this 2020 recruiting class. So I'm, I'm, I'm full believer <laughs> in this. On brand, on uh, brand. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> um, Let's see. And... I, I guess, um, O-line, D-line, uh... You know, I'm going to go with my flex. I'm going to go with uh, my boy Slade Bolden. Oh. Tyler. Just like, <laughs> <"Yeah."> <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. I love Slade. Yeah, he's one of those guys that we love to say is a uh, Swiss Army knife, can do so many different things, can run the wildcat, can uh, you know, can run the ball, can, uh, can catch the ball, can do it all. Uh, I loved him in high school. And, uh, you know, obviously, uh, you know, we saw him a little bit. Uh, this past season, so uh, I think Alabama's got full belief in him, and uh, yeah, I think they want to use him um, as much as they can. And uh, you know, Bryce Young as my quarterback, get the ball to uh, spread it and out to Keelan Robinson, Devontae Smith, and uh, Slade Bolton. I love it. Oh man! All right, Kyle, you have a chance to pick uh, 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 Shane Lee. I think. No, <laughs> I already have a lot. Uh, oh, oh no! Never mind. You were just high on him a second ago. I didn't know, you know. Uh, all right. I got a uh, – I got to choose someone from the secondary. Um, I appreciate Kyle's just total disregard for the running back position almost as much as I appreciate Tyler's disregard for <laughs> DeMarco Hellams. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. I think, okay. I, I think DeMarco Hellams, um, you know, I, I know – a lot of people are expecting, you know, maybe D Wright to start at that other safety position along with Jordan Battle. But I just think from what I've seen, um, the small sample sizes of DeMarco Hellams, I'm a believer. I think he's a guy who could come up and really lay the wood on an opposing offensive player. And I, I think that, you know, I, I'm not sure if he's going to start, but I know he's going to play a ton this year along with D Wright. He, he could possibly win that position. I don't know. We talked about that earlier when you look at position battles. So uh, DeMarco Hellams, I'm a believer. I, I think he's a, a great, you know, player in the secondary. And I think you could see some, some youth in the secondary, right? You have Jordan Battle, 
who will be a sophomore. DeMarco Hellams, he's another young cat. Um, you know, depending on if uh, Ronald Williams start, that'll be a first year player at Alabama. Um, Patrick Sertan um, will be a junior now, I believe, and um, be interesting to see who gets that other corner spot. But I do like DeMarco Hellams. So yeah, that's, that's my DB. Yeah, uh, that's an interesting one because that means that Josh Job will not be drafted. In yeah, draft. that surprised me. I expected Job to, to go to somebody. But hey, um, with my next pick, uh, what is it, my fifth pick, sixth pick, I'm going to fill this uh, this linebacker position with a player that I'm writing about tomorrow in our defensive breakout stars. I'm going to go with Christopher Allen. I think he could be the leading pass rusher. Um on this team, uh, from a, at least from a linebacking position, I think, you know, when you look at the, it's nice to, to look at some of the young guys coming in, but Chris Allen is a guy that's established. He's, he's been in the system a while. And it wasn't too long ago that he was one of the people that we were looking at as one of these exciting players coming in. It just so happened he tore his ACL, kind of had his momentum delayed a little bit, but I think now we're going to see that breakout season we've been waiting for. Tyler, you're on the clock, man. Okay, I'm going to – Kyle, I'm going to end the game of uh, quarterback chicken that we've been playing this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and take Talia off the board. Oh. Um, okay. I uh, – so, as everybody watching probably knows, I wasn't here last year. I, I didn't cover the team or get to watch Talia in practice. But I did watch Talia at the 8 day game. Um, and I just – he made an impression on me. Just – I mean, there were some awful throws that he made. Not – you know, he – he pushed it a little too much through into double and triple coverage, but he also, you know, he made a, a very Tua esque throw on the run um, that I think went for a touchdown late in the game. And, you know, I think there's something with Talia. I think Max great. And uh, you know, we may not see Talia a lot in, in college, but uh, you know, I think that's just because other guys are doing well. I don't think that's a knock on him at all. No, I think when you look at a player like Talia, I think one game that came, that we saw the most of him was against Arkansas, right? Um, and there, there were some good throws that he had in there, and he showed some great escapability, some side-to-side -side stuff. He did make a couple of throws that, um, you know, he shouldn't have thrown, quite frankly, but he did have a couple of, you know, kind of moments of flash. And, and the same thing in the A-Day game. I, I believe he threw a touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. So um, be curious to see what happens with Talia. You know, we've all talked about a lot. Of, someone asked me today, why don't you talk more about Talia Tungvaloa? Well, you know, we, we quite frankly don't know. I mean, there's so much hype with Bryce Young coming in. Um, Mac Jones returns. And we have to see what happens with Tua Tungvaloa when he's drafted and to see how that'll play out. I think one of the reasons, um, you know, we talk about that is because of the fact that Tua's father said that and I think it was Tua said that he didn't want to sit on the bench, that he was thinking about transferring. That's why I think a lot of people, when they talk about Talia transferring, that's, you know, mm. that's probably the reason for it. But, um, yeah, I'm not surprised to see uh, you take uh, Talia. I was, uh, I, I, was, I was figuring I was going to end up with Paul mm. Tyson. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, since Tony's really, really proud of me for just disregarding the wide receiver position, I'm going to continue to commit to not picking a wide receiver. And I'm actually going to, I'm going to take uh, Sark, who I think is probably the uh, top choice of the assistants available. Wow. I I'm curious. Uh, uh, do y'all agree with that? That he's probably yeah. the top choice? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. He'll do really good with uh, the with, <laughs> with two <laughs> running backs. The receiving game that you have. <laughs> that really fits, right? He'll love your receiving option. <laughs> <laughs> Najee's gonna be my uh starting wide receiver it looks like yeah <laughs> great um Love this. um okay we look at my team see i see a bunch of leaders see i see mac jones uh I see lebron ray I see chris allen i'm gonna add to that later with somebody i think that could be the team captain uh of this team, a permanent team captain, and I'm going to take Landon Dickerson uh, at center. Landon Dickerson, nice choice. How many uh, how many points is it worth in this game to just pick captains, Tony? Do you get does your team perform better if they're if you just have eight leaders? I, I you know what I, I think it, I think it helps. I think you know uh, the team chemistry is going to be great. Um, we also have receivers on this team, so they, <laughs> um, so yeah. All right. Let's see. Um, okay. I'm, um, I'm up next and I got to pick, 
All right. I, I already know who my quarterback's going to be, so I don't have to pick a quarterback. Um, okay. I will go with, um, I'll go with uh, my assistant coach and I will take Sal Sincere. I'm curious to see yeah. how he can work with Jalen Waddell and uh, Tyrell Shavers. Yeah. So uh, yeah, my, uh, my pick is uh, Sal Sincere. If anybody's seen our videos on, on our YouTube channel or just seen how Sal Sincere coaches, it's uh there's a lot of uh there's a lot of bleeping right when he coaches the players but he's like an old school coach and he's actually coached at alabama twice um like the, like the way he coaches coaches the guys up a lot of players you know like that fire and um i was really curious to see who could replace kind of tosh lapoy's you know energy level and sal sincere certainly <laughs> you know kept those outside linebackers going hard so uh sal sincere he is my pick and uh yeah that's uh that's my assistant I think you've locked up the best defense, Kyle. Yeah. Yeah. Defense is solid. Yeah. I'm, I'm the defense is, but I, I mean, quarterback running back, uh, we'll see, but uh, I feel good about the D. That's the, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Is it me? Yeah. No, it's, it's a bone. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. I was, it's bone, I yeah. it was. I was um, losing some track here. All right, let's see. I guess I'll take an assistant coach um, and give me Carl Scott. Um, Ooh. Damn, I was actually going to take Carl Scott. Let me tell you about <laughs> Carl Scott, man. He's, you know, I'm taking him for two reasons. I'm taking him, one, because of his uh, excellent recruiting ability. I mm -hmm. mean, he's a you know, one of the top recruiters on the entire staff. And I'm also taking him because of his coaching ability and also – he works side by side with Nick Saban every single day at practice coaching those defensive backs. So I think he picks up a few things from coach Saban here and there uh, about being a head coach one day. I think he's going to be a head coach one day. And I like Carl Scott as my, uh, as my assistant coach right there. I think I was going to take Carl Scott uh, just about over anybody, maybe yeah. not Sark, <laughs> but I, okay. I'll take, I'll take Carl Scott there. And, uh, Man, I guess give me the big nasty on the offensive line. Give me, uh, give me Deontay Brown. Um, you know, I remember being out at a football practice uh, when Deontay was in high school, and uh, just watching him just maul people. I mean, I was just, I said, you know, if this guy can keep his weight under control, uh, he can be an All-American offensive lineman. And uh, you know, he serves up a lot of pancakes every single game. And as long as he can keep keep his uh, his body in good shape, I think he can, you know, certainly be a uh, you know, an all American at the offensive guard position down the road. <sighs> all right. Now you, uh, that was good. Cornbread. That's a good pick. So the, those are all the linemen, Deontay Brown, Dickerson, Leatherwood and Neil, no surprise. All right. Um, okay. My running back is going to be, um, Damn, this is tough on me because I will go with uh, uh, can I go with let's see Chase Chase I'm trying to figure out which freshman running back is going to be the best. All right. Can I can I phone a friend? Can I ask Bone on that? No, oh. <laughs> I'm the wrong one. Yeah. Um, um, Jerome Ford. No, stop. <laughs> I would, I would honestly like to put just because I've seen him and I know he's like a wide receiver slash running back. I'd like to put Jadarius Towns in there, um, but I, but I figured he's back with the wide receivers. Um, so I'm going to pick. Um, I liked, I liked when uh, Tyler went to go check out uh, Kyle Edwards. So um, I like. I mean, dude's yoked. He's a big back, fast kind of a, you know, I mean, all of them, you know, Roydo Williams, Kyle Edwards, Jace McQuillan. I think you can't go wrong with any of those guys, but I think, um, you know, I'll, uh, I like those guys out of Louisiana, you know, they, they, uh, they go hard. So Kyle Edwards at running back. I like the pick. <laughs> all right. Uh, it's Tony. Yeah, I'm going to go with a little bit of a curveball here. Um, just making sure I can do this. Yes. Um, I'm going to go with a, a potential breakout player and somebody that I feel like at this point in the draft could be worth taking a chance on. I'm going to go with Jaleel Billingsley, tight end. Figured. 
you figured that pick because I just came up with that. Like, <laughs> I mean, no, I, I was going to I was going to pick him if nobody else did earlier. Uh, I was going to pick Jason McClellan because he's a Texan, but I'm just going to give up that stick on this draft. No, I mean, I mean, you, you look at a player like J- <sighs> Jalil. I mean, he's I mean everything you you want, kind of that flex type guy. Um, no, I think he. I, I mean, he could potentially have a monster season. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking at the the tight ends that are going to get the most yardage, and I the, the way that these this draft kind of sets up, you're looking at that. He's definitely the the tight end that I would project to getting the most yardage. And then when we look at the options at running back and receiver, I don't really think there's anybody else that can really get the yardage that Jaleel can. So anybody left on the board that they, they could get that. So that's that was my pick. All right, Tyler, you up? You got two picks right here. Your last okay. two. Okay, uh, for my linebacker one position. Picture. Yeah, for my linebacker position, I'm going to take uh, Christian Harris. I think, uh, you know, I, I expect him to be a lot better this year. Um, and to be honest, I'm kind of uh, surprised that he fell to me, um, taking a linebacker this late. So I'm really happy with how that worked out. And then uh, I guess I need to take a wide receiver so we have somebody to throw to. Good luck. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to uh, probably butcher this game. I'm not sure if, if it's – Javon or Javon, but I'm going to take the freshman uh, Javon or Javon Baker. Um, just kind of take a flyer on him. Um, you know, as a junior, he had uh, 1,100 yards, eight touchdowns. Um, I don't have a senior stats in front of me off the top of my head, but I mean, you know, just I, I think that, he, you know, he seems like he could be a guy, 6'2, 195. Uh, you know, I think he could definitely grow in this offense. And, uh, you know, to be honest, uh, there's not a whole lot of guys left to pick from. <laughs> who was that tyler say it again say uh javon baker javon baker. Right. javon baker guy that's not even here right now okay i'm extremely happy with him too <laughs> <laughs> all right and um is he only is that is that a uh starter or is that a or is that a bench player well that's for me he's a starter <laughs> <laughs> not uh, that he's not good it's just uh yeah, I mean, got it. making an impact this year might be tough. Um, of course, I, of course, half my team are all freshmen, so who knows if they're even going to play? <laughs> Tony, you got uh, uh, your assistant. Yeah, so like I said, uh, Kyle did not let me pick Ty P. Ryan. So in honor of Ty P. Ryan, I'm going with Jeff Banks, who I feel like could probably sneak Ty P. Ryan into our team. And also coach <laughs> Jaleel Billingsley at the flex. <laughs> All right. So there's a uh, Tony's team is complete. All right. So I will now move to adding Paul Tyson um, at my quarterback position. Um, pro style quarterback, 6'4", 220. Um, I, I kind of, I was, I was, if, if bone didn't take um, Slade, I was going to see if Slade is still left on the board and then have him <laughs> at that QB spot and just have him as that wildcat with Kyle Edwards, Waddle. I mean, I don't know, but uh, it didn't work out. So I got Paul Tyson as my quarterback. So my team is complete. Wow. Oh, and you have the last pick of the uh, COVID Bam Insider draft. Well, obviously it's a defensive lineman. Um, I'll tell you who, I'm, who I want to pick, but then I'm going to tell you who I'm going to pick. Who I want to okay. pick is uh, I want to pick Tim Smith um he is awesome i mean big time talent coming in he's not my pick but oh, he's, who I want, he's who i want to pick uh but the fact that he is not there yet um not enrolling until the summer and he's going to be behind um you know you just don't know when the team's going to be able to start practicing again and that stuff like that i'm going to go with a guy who is there he started coming along uh late in the season last year is uh Fidarian Mathis. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Um, I think he's got a chance to, um, to, to, to make a, uh, potentially make a big impact. Uh, he's another one of those Louisiana kids, uh, seems to always play, play with a chip on their shoulder. Um, and I I think he's got a chance to, uh, you know, really come on strong this upcoming season and have a great year. All right. So there's a, let's see. Okay. I obviously won this guys. I'm sorry. I I, want to be modest here, but I, I can't. Sign off in the comment box. We'll, no, we'll let the fans decide. Sign off in the comment box. We already got one vote from um, Who Dat for Life. He says that uh, Tyler with, he has the first place team, then Bone, third place Tony, and then last place Kyle. Okay, that's the first uh, 
that we got another vote coming for uh for Kyle. That's the second uh vote. So I got one. Um someone likes your, your Mathis pick. We'll let a couple more votes come in. All right, now we can each go around and um let's see. All right, Carl Scott, Jeff Banks. All right, those are our assistant coaches. I don't know. I mean, um let's let a couple more votes come in. Here they go. Tony, we got a vote for Tony coming in. Finally, a Tony, smart Tony, Tony <laughs> according to Josh, thanks Josh for the comment. Tony barely edges out bone. Um, Preston D is saying Tony as well. There um, go, Preston. Big let, love. Let's get uh, three three more votes in and uh, let's see see what the fans say. Uh, I, this was cool. I liked it. I mean, it was, Preston uh, and Josh sound like some really smart commenters. I mean, I think we should have stopped the voting. I think it should have just been first person. <laughs> you know, our most right. loyal fan gets to. Pick. Hey, we need a couple more votes. So sound off. Who has the best team? I should have promoted um, this more on the recruiting board today. Right? <laughs> that wouldn't have been fair. All right. Um, Furious. All right. I just want to see Paul Tyson throw uh, the Norman, Norman with Tony. So Tony's got one more. Norman. Uh, we in this. Tony's defense doesn't do it for me. That's uh from Who Dat. Sorry. Who Dat. Senior, uh, defense is I'm uh, a big fan of Who Dat. We're running up scores, man. And uh, <laughs> yeah, no, it's good. No, good stuff. I um, I hope you guys had a good time. You know, stick, sticking with us tonight. Uh, defense wins championships, Tony. Someone said that as well, which I agree with because I have Dylan Moses, Not win seven and, and, more. and I have Sal Sincere as my uh, assistant coach. Um, thanks for thanks for watching. And I hope you guys have fun. I mean, it looks like we're getting closer to the end of this quarantine tunnel. So, um, you know, continue to stick with us at BamiInsider.com. Um, I'm going to um, get out of this, share screen. So now it's all four of us back on screen. Um, thanks for following us. And, and thanks for subscribing. Be sure and hit the like um, button down at the bottom and uh, follow, the, follow the team's content. You know, Tony and Tyler put together a great 2020. 20 for 20 series uh, bone put up some great articles today on the recruiting front. And also we had some coverage on um, Nate Oates and we'll get a chance to hear Nate mm -hmm. Oates speak about the 2020 class tomorrow, which is Thursday on April 16th. So um, stick with us, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're coming to you and we appreciate you guys not only subscribing right here on YouTube, but also on bandmaninsider.com. Um, did you guys have fun tonight? Yeah, oh, yeah. This is yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Yeah, for, for Wednesday night. And maybe we're, we're talking about it, you know, maybe making it like, you know, uh, a Wednesday night deal where we get together. We just kind of, you know, get together. And maybe even we have a BamaInsider.com happy hour. You know, maybe we just kind of talk some sports, talk some football and, you know, share our favorite beverages with the rest of the BamaInsider.com. There you go. With the rest yeah. of the BamaInsider.com uh, family. Tony, why don't you film in what you're drinking tonight? Oh, I'm drinking. Well, it's done. <laughs> it's gone. But, uh. It was a Brazilian drink called a Caparina. It's a lime, sugar, and a Brazilian liquor called Cachaça. <laughs> you kind of got to pound the limes. Um, you kind of want to get that zest in there. And then uh, just add a tablespoon of sugar, shake it up, put it over ice, and you're ready to roll. <laughs> I'll probably move to a, um, El Muchacho, um, good people beverage. Right after. Um, yeah, have you tried their, uh, their uh, Mexican lager? Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Chuck is a great yeah. beer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's probably that's what I've been looking with lately. So um good stuff. But um we uh again thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing for the bandinsider.com crew, Andrew Bone, Tyler Waldrop, Tony Sukalis, Kyle Henderson. We'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for following us and uh, catch you soon back at bandinsider.com. Good night, everyone. Good night. See you guys. All right, ladies, fellas. See ya. Thanks. See ya.